Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other bound I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, I see a lot of green in the audience. I don't have any green on, but I'm going to read a prayer by St. Patrick in a little bit, so I'm counting that as my green. Um, your music minister, by the way, is not wearing any green, just so you know. Um, so <laughs> I, um, I've been thinking about what to, what to speak on this morning, and um, I work in a children's hospital, for those of you that don't know, and um, I love it so much. And um, it's been pretty difficult lately. Like, as you can imagine, there's some sad things that can happen. And for those of you that spend time in a hospital, you know, there can be a lot of um, spiritual darkness. There can be a lot of just attacks on um, the physical body, the spiritual body, the mental body. Um, and I, like, I choose to go there. But I just think about, and you know what? I might cry right now, <laughs> but bear with me. Um, I choose to go there, but I just think about the patients and families that don't choose to go there, that they, they, they go because something has happened to them. Um, and in all of our lives, like, we're constantly struggling. Not constantly, but, like, life is difficult. <laughs> life is really hard, and as believers, we have an incredible hope in Jesus, and I'm just, I'm so thankful for my faith in that um, the Lord has given me the ability to be in that environment to help families, um, but I just think about how um, we have an incredible opportunity to share the love of Jesus, and um, I just, it's just incredible that even though we're struggling, we have a consistent thing across the board as believers, and that's Jesus, and that he is with us, and he's constantly around us, and I find that if I'm not in the word, if I'm not praying, if I'm not coming to church to fellowship with believers, it's really hard. It gets harder to, to live life, and um, I have a bad habit of scrolling on Instagram every morning, um, but I follow someone uh, called David Crowder. He's a Christian singer, and he posted the prayer of St. Patrick today, and I just was like, this is so applicable for us that it talks about just um, surrounding yourself with Jesus and surrounding yourself with Christ. Um, so I'm going to read it for you, and then I'm going to walk away before I cry some more. Um, so the prayer of St. Patrick goes like this. It says, Christ be with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me. Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ where I lie, Christ where I sit, Christ where I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of every man who speaks of me, Christ in the 
in every eye that sees me, and Christ in every ear that hears me. So I just pray that over my life and over your life, as we go into the next week, and that we would just have Christ all around us, and remember that he's with us, and he is for us, and he understands everything that we're experiencing. So, thanks. Worship this morning, let's stand together and sing grace greater than our sin.
Let's pray. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day to come together and praise and worship you in song and to learn of your will. Lord, I just pray that it be with Brother Larry that brings the message and I pray that we apply it to our lives, Lord, to, to know you better and to grow closer to you. Lord, we thank you for the time to share this opportunity to go help our brother, new pastor, move. We pray that their um, transition is, is easy and let us show our love to him and uh, welcome them and his family in. Lord, we ask you to be with the tithes and offerings. And Lord, we praise you with all our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I think that's a bit of Lou. If you would take your Bible, my great, whoa. That woke everybody up, didn't it? All right. Take your Bible and turn to Psalm 40, if you would. Psalm 40. How many of you like something new, a new car, a new clothes, new, yeah, rest of you a bunch of liars. I know you are. I mean, it's like, I don't know. You know, we like new things. Uh, we like to show them off. We like to be excited about them. We, we just enjoy new things when it comes to not, not changes so much, but new things. So I want to talk today about a new song as you begin a new day in the life of the church. You know, songs are interesting. You know, there's always a time where a song is new. And there may be some songs that the very first time you heard them, you thought, I, I don't like that. I, that's not going to be successful. That, that's not going to make it. it nobody's going to want to sing it. And now it's the kind of song that just, you know, you know all the words. It's amazing how you can, there, there could be a song that you haven't heard in 20, 30 years, and you hear the song and you can remember the words. There's something about a song and there's something about a new song that begins to seep into our lives and begins to impact us and just truly implants itself in our minds and our hearts. Well, I want to talk about a new song in the life of the church. Now, I want to encourage everybody here today. I know there's a lot going on. There's a lot of activity. You know, there's people cooking. There's people getting food ready. You're thinking about eating chicken. I got all that. But I want to encourage you just for the next little bit to truly focus and to do your best to pay attention and to stay in place and to follow in God's Word because you need to be a part of this new 
song because you don't want to be the person that's singing out of tune. Have you ever stood next to somebody that thinks they can sing, but they can't? Yeah, yeah, you know. And they're just going to town and you're thinking, do you hear yourself? Are you aware of what you're doing? See, you want to listen today to make sure that we're all in tune together in this new song, Psalm 40, verse 3. I'm going to ask you to stand one more time if you're physically able. We'll just read that one verse while you're standing. And then if you'll keep your Bible open to Psalm 40. Psalm 40, verse 3, the psalmist writes, And he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. Thank you and be seated. Keep your Bible open to the 40th chapter of Psalm. As we think about this new song the Lord needs to place in our hearts. First, it's a new song of elevation. This morning, as you as a church begin a new journey, we need to make sure we're singing a new song of elevation in two areas that are found in this song. One, elevation of our purification. If we we'll look again there in verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Then look here in verse 2. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay. You and I need to sing a new song of elevation out of the miry clay, that we might be a people of purification, a people that truly our daily walk, now listen carefully, our daily walk, not just our walk inside the doors of the church, not just our walk when we go off with the youth group or we go off with the ladies to a conference, but our daily walk is elevated in the area of purification and we don't find ourselves dwelling, as the scripture calls it, in the miry clay. You go, oh, well, that's, that's none of your business. You know, I mean, that's not your job. Friends, let's make something clear. It matters not about what I think. It matters not about what your neighbor knows. God knows every impure thought, act of our lives. Now think about that. It's not like he's caught off guard. It's not like we kept it in secret. So as we begin a new day, a new song in the life of the church, let's all make sure we are singing a new song of elevation, of purification. Oh, well, then you're going you're to be judging people. We're not supposed to judge. Friends, the Bible makes it clear as a Christian, I am to produce fruit that give evidence of my faith. And so if people look at us and they don't see Christ in us, it's obvious we need to begin a new song of purification, but also a new song of position. If you'll continue there in verse 2, at the second part of it, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. We need to have a song of elevation about our position. Our position. How do I have a new song of purification? I have a position of being a child of the king. You'll never live a life of purity until you found yourself admitting you're a sinner, repenting of your sins, putting your faith and trust in Jesus to forgive you of your sins. You go, well, I'm doing my best. I'm trying the best I can. You'll never, you'll never make it. And it says this position is given to us as a new song of elevating us on this position of putting our feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. Friends, we need to be in the position of a Christian. We need to make sure we're saved. But then we need to also live in that position and be excited about whose we are. Well, I, 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 don't wanna, I don't want people to know I'm saved. That's a horrible statement. I don't want people to know I'm part of the church. What are you embarrassed about? We all like position. We want to be on the starting team. We want to be in the big office. We want to be number one. We want to have a position. So let me challenge you to begin to sing a new song that says, I have a position. I'm a child of the King, washed in the blood of the Lamb, born again, changed, renewed. I have a life. I am striving to live a life of purification because of my position. It's not who I am. It's whose I am. 
And I guarantee you, if you as a congregation begin to sing this new song, and as Brother Andy comes and begins to sing the song with you and lead you in this new song, this community will begin to see elevation. I'm afraid in the day in which we live, we've done things backwards. Instead of keeping things elevated and challenging people to live up to a standard that's godly and holy, what we do is keep lowering and lowering and lowering the standard. It's like hurdles. Any of you ever ran hurdles in track? Any, anybody ever done that? Anybody? Some people? Yeah, okay. I ran hurdles once. Key word there was once. And I realized something really quick. Those things are too high. I mean, you know, they said, okay, you know, you got you to get your steps right, and you got to do it, then you got to hit, and you got to launch, and you got to so forth. Now, I could run hurdles if they just lower them. I could be a star hurdle runner if it was about two inches off the ground. I mean, I, it wouldn't give me any trouble at all. Well, friends, that's what we've done when it comes to morality and to biblical teaching. And even in the life of the church, well, we can't, we can't hold this standard high. They won't come. I believe people are looking for something that challenges them and says, this is what the Bible says. This is who we are. And we challenge you to join with us that we march towards that high point, as it says. And he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. So we need to help people avoid the miry clay and to help people move to the position of elevation. So our new song begins, sort of the first line in our, our new song is about elevation. So let's stop. If you're lost today without Jesus Christ, you need to be saved. Well, it's not the invitation. No, 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 no. You need to be saved right now. Because you're not guaranteed, and hear me carefully, you're not guaranteed you'll make it to the invitation. You're not. So if you're lost, you need to say, Dear Lord, I, I, I'm sorry, and I, I want to repent of my sins, and I want to be saved. And then if you find yourself going, Man, I know there's some impurity in my life. I know I'm a Christian, and I know I've asked the Lord to save me, but there's some things in my life that I'm just in that miry clay, then you want to begin to sing a new song. And say, Lord, I'm sorry, and forgive me, and, and then help me to sing a new song of purification. But also, there's a new song as we begin this new day in the life of the church. Of consultation. See, we all consult different people and things. We all ask people their opinions, and we talk about what do you think, and we, we take polls. You know, our, our nation is overwhelmed with poll taking, you know, surveys. Well, let me encourage you to sing a new song of consultation, first of consulting his word. There in verse 7 it says, Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book, it is written of me. I need to have a new song of consultation that I'm always in consultation of His Word. I make the assumption that everybody here has a Bible. Now, you may not have brought it with you today because you said, well, the verses will, will be on the screen. Or, but I, I venture to say everybody here has a Bible or you have the Bible app in your phone. Or you, we've got a Bible, but friends, just because we've got a Bible doesn't mean we consult God's Word. We need to sing a new song of consultation about always going to God's Word because in the God's Word, there are things for me. What should I do with my life? Consult God's Word. Who should I marry? I consult God's Word. Where should I spend my time? Consult God's Word. Where should I invest my money? Consult God's Word. Where should I be on Sunday? Consult God's Word. We need to be a people that are consulting God's Word. Every day we need to read God's Word. Now, you may be a morning person. Maybe you get up at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the morning and you spend 30 minutes reading God's Word. Wonderful. Maybe you go, I, I'm not going to get up early. I'm a late night person. Well, you know what? God's up at night too. Read God's Word. Play it, let it read to you as you drive. Maybe you've got a long commute back and forth. Man, let the Word of God just play through whatever music venue you use. We need to consult 
God's word because the world is looking for somebody that's got an answer. Every day there's this, well, I've got the answer. We'll try that. Well, I've got the answer. We'll try that. I, friends, we've got the answer. The problem is we just don't consult it. I challenge us in these new days to sing a new song of consulting God's word. And I know as Brother Andy comes, he'll share God's Word. And you make sure that you bring your copy of God's Word and you follow along and you read and you study. I encourage you, and it's a challenge in all of our churches, I encourage you to do something that seems more and more hard for our people to come to Sunday school. Where you spend time in God's Word. And if you would say, you know, I don't need to come to Sunday school, I already know what's in God's Word, then we'll let you teach a class in Sunday school. Friends, every time I read God's Word, every time I preach a message, I'll find myself seeing things, saying things, finding things that I never saw before. We need to consult a new song of consultation about God's Word, but also consulting His will. In verse 8 it says, I delight to do Thy will, O my God. Thy law is within my heart. I delight to do Thy will, Your will, O God. We need to consult His will. Well, how do I know God's will? I consult His word. I'm His child. I'm living in the position of a Christian. I'm having a purified life. I'm growing more and more like Christ. And I can find and I hear Him guiding me. And I know His will for my life. It's God's will that you've called Brother Andy Corson to be your next pastor. It's God's will that you come and you support and you challenge and be a part of all that God wants you to be. It's God's will that every man and woman, boy and girl, come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's God's will that you tithe and you participate in what God's doing. We, don't, we, we ask, well, if God would just stop me on the road and tell me, friends, God's already told us. We have to consult God's word and we have to consult His will. Because we all consult something. We all, we do. Well, what's your opinion? What do you think? And, and I asked four friends. and Maybe you made those lists. We've all made those lists. You know, the, the positives and the negatives. You know, here's all the good reasons we ought to do this. And here's all the, the bad reasons we ought to do this. When Gail and I were thinking about getting married, her dad had me do that. He said, all right, Larry, I want, what I want you to do now. I want you to write down here. I want you to write down here all the bills you anticipate being married. Okay, now right over here, all the money you're going to make. Uh, and he said, well, you can't afford to get married. Well, I couldn't. But we did. We got through it. God bless. Friends, I challenge you to make sure your new song is a song of elevation. Your new song is a song of consultation. Oh, and your new song is a song of celebration. All in the days in the life of the church, as you gather this afternoon, many of you, and you welcome Brother Andy, and then next Sunday as you come and you gather for his first day and you have a, a meal, because we're Baptists, you've got to have a meal with everything, you know, so we'll have a meal and it'll be a positive time. You need to be in a celebration mode. Now, I'm going to let some of you know something. Please don't be offended. Some of you need to let your face know you're in a celebration mode. I mean, I don't know how to tell you that, but I'm just letting you know. I mean, you need to realize that the way you look, when, when, when he stands in the pulpit next Sunday, you need to have a face that says, I am glad you're here, and I'm glad I'm here. Not, you better be good, because I'm tired, and I really don't want to be here. And I, No, no, no. We need to have a new song of celebration. I, I love it when we sing and we sing out and we sing with, with reckless abandon. We just sing. A new song of celebration with my words in verse 9. It says, I have proclaimed glad tidings of righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I will not, I like this, I will not restrain my lips, O Lord. Thou knowest. I will not restrain my lips. They're not going to make me hush. We need to find ourselves celebrating with our words. You need to tell everybody you see this week, man, our new pastor's here. You need to come Sunday. It's going to be great. You need to come to God's house. You need to celebrate. I know good and well this community is like all. If the high school wins the state championship, everybody celebrates. 
If your little league kids, if your kids on little league team and they win something, you celebrate. We'll celebrate anything, you know, except when it comes to God's house. We come to God's house, get all prim and proper. It's funny to watch us when we get here. We pull up in the parking lot. We're laughing and cutting up. We meet each other at the door. We're patting each other on the back, shaking hands, got a big smile on our face, talking about what all happened during the week. We, we're, in, in your situation, you're in the foyer out there. You're just having a good time. You come in and you have the first song. You sort of get settled. Then it's the welcome time. Everybody goes around again. Oh, I'm so good. I'm oh, so glad I have you here. Oh, it's great. Then it comes time for the preaching. We get locked in for preaching. And then what's funny is you, you've got a mental clock. And then you begin to think, you know, I think it's about time to go. And you begin to get happy. You begin to shuffle a little bit, get all your stuff together. And you're thinking, man, I, does that guy not have a watch? Then you begin to do that. And by the way, friends, this does nothing for me. I'm sorry. I don't know what that's supposed to mean when you do that. I'm, well, you know. Guess what? We need to celebrate the fact that we're in God's house. That we sing songs of praise, and our words need to be words of celebration. Somebody says, where were you today? I was in God's house. We had great singing. We heard God's word. It was a wonderful time. Celebrate with our words, but also in a new song of celebration with our walk. In verse 10, he says, I have not hidden thy righteousness within my heart. I have spoken of thy faithfulness of thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. In other words, I've not just kept it in my heart. I've not just talked about it. I've lived it. I've walked it. We need to make sure that what we talk about here is what we live there. Celebration in our walk. I want to encourage you. A new song and a new walk. I want you to have a holy swagger. There's a term to hold on to. I want you to walk with a holy swagger. I'm a child of the king. I am saved. I am washed in the blood of the lamb. And I am changed. And I am thrilled to be called his. Not, woe is me. Oh, I'm so beat. I'm so devastated. Oh, but, but Brother Larry thinks bad things happen. I know bad things happen. Friends, I guarantee you all of us right now could take a microphone and tell about bad things that happened the last couple of weeks. Sickness, financial distress, rebellion in the home, trouble in marriages, community issues, tragedies across the country and the world. But in the midst of that, I can still walk because he walks with me. And he talks with me. Oh, friends, we need to find ourselves with a celebration in our words and a celebration in our walk. When you and I go someplace, people ought to know, man, there's something about you. I, I, what is about you different? Well, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. Well, that person over there says they're saved too. Well, I don't know what's wrong with them, but I know I've got Jesus, and I, I want you to understand. Now, I'm not talking about a fake smile. I'm not talking about, you know, beauty pageant wave, you know. I'm talking about real joy and real celebration. Oh, but that's not my job. My, I, that's the deacon's job. That's the leadership of the church. My job is to come and to be served. No, it's not. My job is to come and sit and soak and sour till Jesus comes. No, it's not. What's my job? What's your job? My job is to every day when I wake up and my feet hit the ground, Satan goes, oh, no, they're awake. Oh, no, they're awake. And they're singing, and they're shouting, and they're celebrating, and they're telling, and they're reading God's Word, and they're praying, and they're going to worship, and oh my gracious, what are we going to do? Friends, we need to have a sense of celebration. I don't know what happened. I don't know when it happened in our churches and in our own lives. I don't know who poured cold water on us, but it's time to have some celebration. I think it would be phenomenal if, if the authorities stopped and came in and said, what in the world is going on in there? It, that we hear all this shouting and all this singing and all this celebrating. What are y'all doing? Is there a riot? No. Nope. Is there something wrong? No. Nope. We're just right with Jesus. I know we don't, we don't do that. I got that. A new song of elevation, a new song of consultation, a new song of celebration, which will give us as a church and as individuals a new song of direction. A direction that's faithful. In verse 11, it says, Thou, O Lord, 
will not withhold thy compassion from me. Thy loving kindness and thy truth will continually preserve me. A, a direction of faithfulness. The Lord will be faithful. Not going to deny us of what we need. And we need to be faithful. Friends, I challenge you in this new day in the life of the church as you begin to sing this new song to be faithful. Faithful. Faithful in Bible study. Faithful in participation. Faithful in attendance. Oh, it doesn't matter if I'm there or not. Friends, it matters. I'll speak from this side of the pulpit. I want you to know, friends, it matters. When you've studied God's Word and you've prepared and you've prayed and you come to God's house and you stand in the pulpit and you look out across empty pews, it hurts. It matters. Your faithful attendance matters. Your faithful prayers matter. Your faithful encouragement matters. Your faithful giving matters. Well, I'm just one person. One person matters. You can be the person that either helps make this church become a catalyst for change for the glory of God, or you can be the person that truly halts things in the track. It's time for us to have a direction that's faithful. Faithful. Oh, you say, well, I, I, I've been saved a long time, and I've served a long time, and it's time, it's time for those younger people behind me to, to pick up the load. No, friends, it's time for all of us to help carry the load. I agree. Those younger should come along aside, but those older should not take the load and dump it. All of us must be faithful to Jesus calls us home, whenever that might be. And then I challenge us to sing a new song of a direction that's forward. Forward. Sometimes the hardest thing for a church to do is to move forward. New pastor comes and shortly, if we're not careful, we say the magic words that pretty much will dull every spirit. Well, we ain't never done it that way before. Back in the day, back in the day, this is what we did. Friends, back in the day, we didn't have air conditioning. Back in the day, some of you didn't have any running water in your house. And back in the day, you plow with a mule. And I don't think any of you do most of that anymore. It's time for us to have a direction of forward. Dear Lord, I want to move forward. I want to reach everybody, not just young, not just old. I want to reach everybody, and whatever we've got to do, we're going to do so now. Are we going to change the doctrine? Never. Are we going to change the Bible? Of course not. Are we going to change theology? No. How are you get saved? You get saved by Christ. But we need to be willing to move forward to accomplish great and mighty things for the Lord. As the new pastor comes, I want you to know one of the things that caused him to know God has called him here is he knows in his heart that God's called him to move the church forward. Now, sure, we have great memories, and you need to hold on to those. This church has great history, and you remember the building of this, and you remember the starting of that, and you remember days of great revival and great renewal. You need to hold on to that, but friends, we don't need to live off of that. We need to look forward. That was good. That was great, but there's greater things ahead. We'll never be like we were. Friends, we want to be more than we ever were. Those young people, they'll never do what we've done. Yes, they can if you'll just love on them and lead them and help them because you've been blessed with a great group of students. I've told you this multiple times. You've been blessed. You've got the opportunity to do something that I'll be honest, some of our churches don't. You've got the opportunity to lay out a path of moving forward and seeing people move into leadership and move into positions and use their God-given gifts and talents. You have the opportunity to sing a new song. And he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Then look what it says in verse 3. Listen, because of the new song in my mouth, which is a song of praise to our God, Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. Every day 
is a day for you to sing praises for the Lord. That many will hear and will fear and will trust in the Lord. That the waters of baptism will be the busiest thing in the church. And week after week after week, the invitation will be filled as people come to the altar and come to share whatever God's laid on their heart. And it all begins when you, not your neighbor, not the deacons, not that person someplace, when you begin to sing a new song. Do you know the song? Do you know the author of the song? Are you living out the tune of the song? And are you drawing people with a new song in Christ? Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can come to this point in the life of this year church. We thank you that there's a new tune, a new song dwelling and bubbling up in the our hearts. And Father, I pray that today, whatever Satan may have placed in the lives of these people, to keep them from hearing and then singing this new song, it will be taken away right now. Those that need to be saved, I would pray they'd be saved today. Those that need to unite with the church, they would do so. Those that need to be baptized would respond. And those that need to come to the altar and deal with whatever, they would. That we might leave here with a united new song that people would hear and respond to. Bless this, your invitation. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Let's stand together and you respond as we sing this morning. Just keep me near the cross, bear a precious fountain, free to remind you again, we, we made some changes in the day schedule, so keep that in mind. Brother Bill, you need to come and share something?
so much. It has been a blessing and an honor to serve with you. I'm excited to meet Brother Andy and to serve along with him uh, as you, uh, with all of our other churches in the association, continue to make a difference. And so we'll be praying for you this afternoon as some of you go and greet him. And look forward to seeing some of you back tonight. And looking forward to having a chance to come back sometime, not too far off, and just visit with you and see how God is blessing. So thank you again. Don't forget your chicken as you go, if you purchase that. And again, thank you for the privilege of not only serving here in this time, but of being your director of missions for this, our association. You continue to pray for the sister churches that we might truly make a difference for the Lord. Thank you, and you're dismissed. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you again for your service. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to meet briefly with the property committee members right after the service. Uh, we have a trial from the school work that needs to be done and checked out for you. I'd like to present that to you. Take a day on it.